Central Valley Talk Live. Austin Green coming to you from our Tower District Studios inside the Mike Briggs Building. This is Artists and Authors, and today we are going to be joined by uh, Kathleen Gorman, who wrote this children's book. It's called The Mystery Hidden in a Name, and the uh, illustrations are by Bonnie... How do you say it? The mayor. Okay, very good. Kathleen, good to meet you. Welcome to the show. So I was reading just a little bit of this book. Um, before we get into the story, I want to hear a little bit about your story as a writer. Uh, okay. I retired kind of sort of in 2010, and I was up against a wall, so I didn't know what to do with myself. I was a teacher for too many years. Oh, okay. Yeah, My mom's a teacher, years. so yeah, very cool. And I ended up being a, a reading specialist teacher for okay. um, the last six, seven years of my, uh, you know, profession. But I um, wanted to do something with retirement, and I found in the Clovis senior in the senior section of the mm -hmm. local B, um, writing for pub class, and Ooh. I decided I'm going to go to Clovis and I'm going to try it. And I called and I asked about it, and I went. I started writing memoirs. Oh. I've had a few published in the Fresno Bee, and then I got the bug, and I just started writing. And I tell you, it is not an easy place to get into, but I enjoy writing. I enjoy being creative, and I have um, four published books and one published curriculum guide. I All this was because of Janice Stevens. She is a wonderful mentor. Okay and friend and she was the leader she's the leader of the class and we just uh, several of us just started spreading our wings because of her encouragement so how did you get to the mystery hidden in a name i was encouraged to join heritage fresno okay and heritage fresno is an organization that it's a nonprofit, and the goal of heritage fresno is to save endangered species to save buildings to keep you know to keep the older buildings established buildings here so we don't lose Fresno's history well they knew I was a writer and I wrote children's books so they asked me if I would write this book and I thought you know what maybe I could do this it's called the Mercy train Mercy boxcar okay. and I remember having a little a girl in one of my third grade classes many, many years ago, mm -hmm. and she, her name was Mercy, but it was spelled the same way. And I decided I was going to take that and tweak it into a story about a little girl who has to find out the heritage of her background. And so what I did was I took it, and she has a conversation with her father right. about where her name came from, because it's an assignment by her teacher. Mm -hmm. So she, he talks to her about it, and she learns that she is not named after a person or a family member, but after a boxcar. And her comment throughout her dad's you know, conversation with her is, so I'm named after a boxcar. <laughs> and he says, tells her, no, you are named after your great, your ancestors. One of them fought during World War I and was transported in the Mercy boxcar when they arrived in the coast okay. in France, they traveled to the front lines and they were put in that boxcar, 40 men or eight horses, and they traveled to the front line to help France fight the war and fight back for their freedom. And then in World War II, she had another ancestor that also fought in a war, World okay. War II. He too fought in France and was transported by the boxcars again. And I just took it, went from there and came up with a story. It's a beautiful story. Thank you. It really is. Um, here's a question. Now, I've got twins. They're five. That will be six in May. I know this would be great for them. Mm -hmm. um, do you have other prime target audiences? I do. I've talked to teachers about it, too. I have a niece in fifth grade this year. Mm-hmm. This Mercy Boxcar is a treasure for Fresno. We have it at the 509 Post okay. off of Fresno Street in town. Okay. And many years ago, it used to be at Roding Park. There's a little bit of history. I remember climbing on this little brown boxcar in Roding Park as a child. And Fresno owns it. 
So they moved it to the 509 post. Uh -huh. So for anybody who's doing a report on Fresno or California, there's a little bit of history they can add to their report. In fifth grade, you write a state report. And so I've suggested to fifth grade teachers that they, as they model California, and the students write their state reports, maybe they can look into the history of their state and see if their state also has a Mercy Boxcar. Because there are no longer 49 of them. There were originally 49. One was gifted to each state by France. Okay. And, but nine of them are, have deteriorated, faded away. Mm -hmm. But Fresno still has theirs, so California has theirs. New Mexico has theirs. My cousin checked into it. Louisiana has theirs. I checked into that, too. So there are quite a few states out there, and I've got teachers encouraging their students now, and my niece is going to do the same thing uh -huh. when she does her report, her state report. I'm going to help her with the history and seeing if her state that she chooses has a Mercy Boxcar to add to her report. Oh, I love it. And uh, also another thing that um, teachers can do is mm -hmm. this talks about heritage. Where did this child's, where did Mercy get her name? So when you talk about family and you're, you're, you talk about generations, you talk about um, sixth grade talks about the history of their family. What countries did your family come from? Maybe they have a name that came from somebody special in their family. I have a cousin who just had a baby. They named her Natalia. They named her Natalia after his grandmother who came from Russia. Wow. And that was a Russian name. Right. So there's two different avenues you can take this book and use it for upper grade kids too. Yeah, and it's it's um, the what what I love too is the the illustrations, and especially for kiddos. Mm -hmm. You know that keeps their attention, They're, and these yes. are darn good yeah good pictures. So yeah. how did you find your illustrator? Actually, this book is published through Halo Publishing, which is a hybrid self-publishing company. They have their own stable of illustrators. Mm -hmm. And I have another book published through Halo, and we decided to use the same illustrator because she knows me, I know her. Yeah. So I sent her pictures. We wanted to be true to the history of our soldiers. Mm -hmm. So as she sent me drafts of her pictures, my husband looked at them. <laughs> and between the two of us and going through encyclopedia and online, we found that there were some mistakes in some of the uniforms. So we had tweaks and different things going on. Mm -hmm. But because she already knew me, Bonnie knew me through um, Internet. She lives in Canada. Oh, okay. okay. So she did her own his history research too. But through this company... And at the end of the book, I love, too, you've got here um, resources. Yes. Which is very, very neat. I did a lot of research. I did not want to fly by the seat of my pants. I wanted to be right. able to speak clearly and make sure people understood that I didn't just create all this. There's a lot of history behind this boxcar. Right, right. Um, what's next for you? I'm working on a couple of other books. You are? Yes, I am. I, I You know, it's one of those things where... You work on a book, you do a critique group, mm -hmm. you send it off to an editor, you get it professionally edited, and then you start sending out submissions. And you wait. Yeah. And you get rejected. Mm -hmm. And you send it again. So there's, I'm getting a tough skin. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it is hard, but um, it's, it's just, you got to be patient. Mm -hmm. You do. You know? Yes. So, um, and do you, are you, all your books, four now, right? Mm -hmm. um, all children's books? All children's okay. books. Okay, and you're going to continue that trend? Yes, okay. I am. I've tried young adult, but uh -huh. I, I had one middle grade book, but I could not um, get it published because it was about um, Indians, and since I'm not American Indian. Oh, okay. So there's, there's a lot of rules you have to follow now. Yeah. You yeah. just can't write a book and put it out there. It's a different world. It is a different world. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, people can buy the book, uh, I, I'd imagine, on Amazon? On Amazon, mm -hmm. Barnes & Noble. I live locally in Fresno. You send me an email, which I, yeah. I, I'm, I'll i be happy to meet you somewhere. I sell them out of the trunk of my car. You do. Great. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes. I sell them all out of the trunk of my car. Jack I, of all trades. Yes, I am. And <laughs> I do vendor events. Whenever we can find something available, we do go to events, and that's where our most of our sales come from. How much uh, for the book? This one is, the hardback is $20. Okay. 
because part of the pro proceeds go back to Heritage Fresno. Awesome. So that they, great. Yeah, okay. I want to, you know, keep the um, organization going. So right. yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, check it out, everybody. Again, the mystery hidden in a name, written by uh, Kathleen here, and it's a perfect. Uh, please come back. Yes. Next time you your next book is set to be Absolutely. released. Absolutely. Okay. I will. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. All right. I'm Austin Reed. That does it for artists and authors. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in the noon hour with more Central Valley Talk. <laughs> CentralValleyTalk.com